to welcome everybody to the pick and pay winemakers table and today a very very exciting evening in association with de Krendel. we've got charles hopkins here the cellar master winemaker from de Krendel. very very interesting man i think that this session should probably be two hours long with the amount of knowledge and wealth of knowledge that you have but uh, thank you very much all for joining i can see quite a few regulars on the screens at the moment i've got a little um screen in front of me and i'm able to see exactly who's there and there seem to be some really great little offerings over there. So welcome, everybody. We've got a, a fantastic evening lined up for today. We've got three incredible wines, a nice variety of wines as well, something for, for everybody, um, something nice and bubbly to start off with, some incredible Sauvignon Blanc, and moving on to some really great Merlot as well. So thank you to Pick and Pay, and thank you to Pick and Pay Online, who have delivered your boxes directly to your house. Um, I can see that you would have all received your boxes. Inside those boxes um, are all your ingredients to make three amazing little canapes. All the ingredients are available at Pick and Pay. I will run through as the evening goes on how to create those canapes, and Charles will chat a little bit more about wine and a little bit more about De Crendel. So welcome, Charles. It's lovely to have you here. Would you mind telling us a little bit more maybe about De Crendel and a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Jono. It's, it's amazing to be here. and. Uh... Yeah, great to show you this free wines. It's uh, three of our best-selling wines. Yeah. And uh, very exciting to be associated that our brand is associated with Pick and Pay and yourself as a well-known chef. Mm -hmm. um, and looking forward to this evening. Guys, yeah, the cradle means the latch or the lock. And the farm yeah. dates back to 1720 and 1893. The Graf family that's still owning the farm. The fourth generation Graf is there. And uh, yeah, it's amazing farm slap bang in the middle of Cape Town, if you use your imagination. Yeah. Uh, seven kilometers away from the ocean um, and uh, on an altitude of 180 and the highest vineyard is 295 meters above sea level. And I'm so privileged to be part of this from the word go. I explained to you that I was uh, the big hand in the design of the winery. And yes. We took this range from 1,800 cases in 2000 and uh four to last year was a total production of eighty four thousand cases wow so, wow so incredible. Really amazing. it's a better like a fairy tale yes exactly yeah. no that's very very interesting and it's really really nice obviously to have very very localized wines as you said it really is so close to cape town yeah it's what 17 kilometers or something if you draw a straight town. line it's 17 kilometers away we are also the closest to the airport and i i love to say that you know, <laughs> to, to luring people to land and straight through to the farm <laughs> yeah there we go incredible yeah. all right so we've got three really, really great wines. As you said, they, they are your, one of your most popular lines. You know, yeah. um, it's, it's really great when you do these tastings to kind of start off with something different, move on to something different and end off with something completely different. And yeah. I think that what we've got here this evening is something really interesting. Obviously, you know, your, your Cap Classique, moving on to something which is really lovely, the, the, the Sauvignon Blanc, which is honestly my personal favorite, mm -hmm. and um, onto a Merlot. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great sort of gradual movement across. Can I open this? You can certainly <laughs> open it. You certainly can. Yeah. So, yes, you said that, um, I mean, you've obviously been with De Crendel right from the beginning, which is quite yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's now 16 years, and um, I saw the, ra the, the range and the production grow from, like I mentioned, 1,800 cases to 84,000 cases. And it's, it's really a, a huge team effort you know, yeah. from the owner to the guy that pruned the vineyards. Uh, I'm now the probably the one that get the pat on the back every now and then, but it's a serious team effort. So guys, this is a true cup classic. It's 70% Chardonnay and 30% Pinot Noir. It has four grams of sugar, and it spent uh, 18 months on the lease in the bottle. Yes. You know, according to um, rules and regulation and law in South Africa, the wine must spend 12 months on the lease. This oh. one spent a bit longer, and it has this unique sort of creamy, citrusy, the brown bread dough, you were like that as a chef, <laughs> as a chef <laughs> as a yeah. and, a, and a great aperitif to enjoy before a meal. And guys, you never pick up a champagne glass, you always just pour and uh, take it back and then re-pour again. Um, there we go, Jono. That's very interesting. Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. So as you were saying, I think that, that that's always something quite nice for people to kind of understand is really about some things, you know, almost as simple as pouring pouring a, yeah. a thing of bubbly and what was interesting what charles was saying is that you know you don't need to pick up the wine the, the glass and angle it and and pour it like that yeah. you literally just pour it bit by bit by bit yeah why would that be 
And it's sorry, just to take you back a bit to wine etiquette. I'm not an expert. I just, I just love it. <laughs> I, love drinking it. <laughs> I love drinking it. It's interesting that this is sort of the quantity you pour in a glass if you have guests, especially if people that love and appreciate wine. But bubbly, you can fill up to 60% of the glass. Yes. And in most cases, it's poured in a flute. Yeah. Uh, there is a strong feeling in the world that uh, to smell it and taste it, it's actually very good to do it in a normal white wine glass. You know, the flute is a bit uncomfortable when it gets to a smaller opening, especially if you have a big nose like mine. <laughs> you struggle to get it in there. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, you know, I think it's just wine etiquette. The days of pouring a wine up to here, you know, 80% of the glass, it, it sort of touch a bit on greediness. Yeah, really. absolutely. You don't do it. Um, and 30%, uh, exactly the volume, I think, that I pour you is the right volume like except if you have a flute you pour it like 60 percent. 100 now i totally agree and i've only really sort of been introduced to these different styles of glasses and what really is actually very good to drink out of um, when you're drinking various different wines and i know that you know we have chatted about it a little bit before in some of our previous sessions um but i totally agree that actually when you come comes to like a really great mcc like this it's actually better to have a wider glass and the, yeah. something that always strikes me is that with a flute you know, you're taking it up to your nose and you get that initial bang of carbon dioxide yeah, yeah. where you actually want this to really yeah. sort of have actually smell the, the wine and get the, the, the notes of the wine yeah. first. So, guys, this is a real, I know we're not allowed to, to use the word champagne. We in South Africa refer to Cup Classic, and, but it's made exactly the same. The blend, the, the varieties use the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir. In some cases in France, they also use a third variety called Pinot Meunier. Okay, yeah. uh, but this is the two varieties, and it's made exactly like champagne, but due to old regulations and uh, uh, between France and South Africa, and I think most countries in the world, they're not allowed to use the word champagne, but uh, yeah. use their own generic term, and we call it Cap Classique. I think we should be proud of the fact yeah. that it's our, it's our own brand. So yeah, let's, mm. let's definitely, you poured cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. So hopefully you guys would have poured yourself a glass of this cup classique. It really is. It's a nice sort of straw color. There's some very, very, very fine bubbles, which is yeah, quite yeah, nice to yeah. notice. That's due to the time in the bottle mm. and on the lease. Mm. And Jonah, did you know that um, if this glass was perfectly polished and clean and, 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 and inside, there will be no bubbles. The bubbles only sort of explode, if I may use that term. That is a rough patch on the inside of the I've heard that. It's, I've heard it's, that. It's, it's so amazing. Exactly. That's that's something that's also quite interesting to note that a lot of the times when you do get these sort of larger glasses that aren't specifically um, champagne flutes or their wine glasses, a lot of times what they do is they etch a small little almost yeah. nodule at the bottom yeah, to but create a, a, bit a bit of a ridge bubble. there. A bit exactly, of a bit there. of a ridge. And yeah. then the bubbles actually take to that and, and come yeah. up from that. Mm. Very, very interesting. All right. So like, it's, I hope that everyone's poured this. For me personally, it's it's a sort of the, the golden thread running through this is ripe citrus. Yeah. And like I say, with the support due to the time on the oak, there's a bit of a brown bread dough character. Yes. And brioche, that sort of character. I'm I'm stepping now on your in your yeah, this is <laughs> this is what you want. Yeah, and it's it's just a refreshing and Great to drink. Fantastic. Great to drink, yeah. All right, good stuff, guys. So enjoy that. Obviously, as some of you guys, if there's two of you, you've got a whole bottle to share between the two between the two of you. A lot of the times, also, which is quite interesting, we do have an option of buying a four pack. So I've seen on the on the screens, you guys also have there's some four, some guys there. There are four of you there as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the first canopy. So as you'll see, we've had some really great fun developing these canopies. We have a look at the tasting notes. We taste the wine. You know, it, it isn't always a complete science when it comes down to, to wine and food pairing, but we try to kind of balance a few of the different notes that you're getting out and seeing what things work with. So for the first one where we've got, we've got a few very, very simple elements that really bring out these flavors of the wine. We've got apple in two forms. We've got an apple chutney, which we've created. And I'll tell you exactly how that's made very, very simply. You've got onions, which is almost like a caramelized onions that you take it down. You've got some apple, which you cook down into almost a little bit of compote. We've added a few little spices like some mustard seed inside there. And then also what we've got here inside your little packets, which you can take out, is basically a little bit of a lavash. And a lavash really is an unleavened bread. Very, very simple. It uses very few ingredients. Basically what it is, it's flour, a little bit of olive oil, some water. And what we've done is we've added a few little sesame seeds and a little bit of thyme. 
Literally, you make a bit of a dough, you roll it out very, very simply onto a pan, and you bake that off in a pan, very, very simple, um, in the oven for at about 180 degrees, and you get this really nice, almost mud sauce kind of little unleavened bread. We've broken it up into little shards. So inside your pack, what you'll also see is we've given you these little display boards, very, very cute little display boards, and you can use this for your, um, your canapes. So you can place that onto your board, just like that, very, very simple. And now we're gonna start building our canapes from a sort of a texture as well as a flavor perspective as well. So inside this little, little pouch that you've been given, it's very, very interesting. What we've done is we've got some whipped camembert and we've given this whipped camembert a little bit of a zest of a, um, of a lemon. And that we've done, I think, wow. just to really kind of I would say just bring out the kind of the lemon notes inside the wine. Yeah, it's, it's amazing the things you talk about, apple, uh, everything that is sort of packed into this bottle of bubbly. Eh? I know, it's, it's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> all these flavors that come out, and yeah. it's actually just grapes, yeah. you know, and it's just the way that, that, yeah. that it works. All right, good. So all you need to do is you just need to snip off the first bit of your, um, your piping bag and this whipped camembert. You can buy this product in Pick and Pay. It's a Fairview product. It's a camembert cream, and if you if you can't get that, you literally can take some really nice ripe camembert. We've just given it a little bit of a zest of some lemon, which we've just um, moved that into. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that, and you're just going to place a few nice big dollops onto your lavash bread. It's a perfect little thing to do for a canapé. Um, as a starter, you can make a little bit of a bigger one if you want to, if you've got a few guests coming around. So I'm just doing four or five little little ones like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of freshness, and a little bit of that really nice kind of like baked apple flavor. Mm -hmm. So take your, your container and a little teaspoon, and you can also just do a few dollops on it. You really don't need to be really, you know, too, too worried about exactly how it looks, but it's nice to make things look beautiful. Because as we know, we do eat with our eyes. And I think on that note as well, we really would love to see you guys doing all of this at home. So please do take some pictures of your food. Please do post it to social media. We do have a competition running as well where you can win one. Uh, there's three prizes worth one of 300 rands worth of Smart Shopper points. You do need to post it to social media and use the hashtag PNP Wine Club and hashtag De Grendel. Take your photos. You can stand a chance. Not only that as well, but please do also ask us questions. We'd love to hear from you. If you aren't posting pictures and you don't know how to do that, it's absolutely fine. You can still stand a chance to win some of the, the Smart Shopper points by asking us some really, really great questions. Mm. All right. Okay, so I'm going to pop this down there. Three little nice dollops of that, smart, that um, apple chutney. And now we've got our fresh apple. Mm. Nice. Nice different thing. What we're going to do is we're just going to slice off I'd say what we call a little cheek of an apple, just like that. There we go. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna place it down and I'm just gonna slice some nice little half moons. There we go. And that's just gonna give a little bit of freshness, a little bit of zestiness. I think that these apples are really great because they are sort of the Granny Smith variety. They've got the quite a nice sort of tartness to it, which will be cool. And I'm just gonna place those at different angles onto our lavash bread. Somebody's asked us to share the recipe. We certainly will be able to share the recipe with you, but literally the recipe, as I said before, is literally flour, a little bit of water, some olive oil, salt, and we've added some sesame seeds and a little bit of thyme. Into a dough, you roll it out. It's probably quite wet. You can sort of push it around a tray and you bake it at 180 degrees in the oven. Very, very simple. Okay, so we're layering we're adding flavor, we're adding texture, we're adding freshness. And the last little bit, which we've got, you'll see a small little packet over here. Very simple as well, sesame seeds, black and white. It just gives a nice sort of, I would say a bit of a nuttiness to it as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna whoop, open that up a bit. And a few of these little sesame seeds right on top. It makes it look nice, it gives it a little bit of a toastiness. And I think that as you were saying, the sort of brioche notes, the mm. toasted brioche notes would come out quite nicely. All right, see, that's the one I've created. Please do show us what you guys have done at home. We'd love to see it. And as we said as well, you can stand the chance of winning 300 rands with Smart Chopper points if you post it to the social media platforms 
and use the hashtag PNP Wine Pub as well as hashtag De Krendel. Are you ready for the tasting? Oh, it looks very nice, I must say. We're very healthy, eh? <laughs> yeah. All right, so, so what we'll do is I'm going to hand this over to Charles. Cool. Here we go. Yeah. And I'm going to take a little sip. So should you do it at home as well? Take a nice, good sip of the Cat Classique. Swirl it around your mouth a little bit. Get those notes out. And then, Charles, would you like to taste our Jeez. little whipped Camembert. I hope I can do it neatly. Eh? You only need to just take half, take half <laughs> and do it. Take a bite of the canapé, taste those flavors, mm. see what it's like, how it sort of reacts with the wine. Sometimes it kind of it, it adds a little bit, sometimes it sort of cuts out. I think the sort of the, there's a certain amount of a small amount of acidity in the in the wine that maybe the camembert, the, the wine will cut through exactly. the camembert. Yeah, amazing. But it is all about trying, experimenting, trying different things. There's a oh. huge amount of ingredients that are available at Pick and Pay that you can try it and just experiment to change it up. If you don't like camembert, you can possibly use maybe even a bit of blue cheese. I'm not sure if that mm. would work, but obviously some some creaminess would mm. work quite nice as well. This is a great welcoming canopy with a glass of bubbly. Eh? Yeah, amazing. exactly. Amazing. Exactly. Mm. Very, very good. Guys, it's lovely to see exactly what you guys are doing as well at home. I can see you. Please do turn on your cameras. I can see some people are really getting involved there. We've got a nice couple of foursomes there. There's some nice dinner parties going on. You guys are doing some really, really great jobs. Obviously, put your mics on mute so you can hear exactly what um, I'm saying. I don't necessarily need to hear exactly all the chitter chatter that's going on in your in your household, but we can't anyway. But uh, but I'd love to I'd love to find out what is actually going on. But yeah, keep your cameras on. It's really, really great to see what you guys are doing. How did you find that? Amazing. Really amazing. Fresh. And it really complements this cup classic extremely well. Good. Really. Yeah, compliments to you. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. good. Compliments good. to pick and pay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I hope that you enjoyed that. A really great cap classique. As you said, I think we should be proud about the cap classiques in this country. Mm. We're not there to follow France. We're yeah. there to set the standards of really what mm. MCCs should really, really be in. And you know, Jonah, if I could add something to that, uh, our country is uh, well known to, to have geographic contrast. And I don't want to use funny high words, mm. but our, you know, even just where we are based at Derminal, we are on the western side. So there's an inner valley and an outer valley. And if you think of an area like Robertson or Powell yeah. or Stellenbosch, it's mountain and mountains and hills. And over time, you realize what varieties are doing well on certain soils, on certain 100%. altitudes. And unfortunately, it takes quite a while. You know, it yeah. takes probably five, six years. You plant a vineyard, it only bears fruits after three, year, three years. And then uh, I think from year five, six, seven, you start to understand, you yeah. know, what is the vinification method you use to you you're supposed to uh, use and you know where this wine will end up in the marketplace yeah exactly and it's interesting that as well i mean i know that obviously being so close to the to the atlantic ocean mm. you really i mean like not just close like how many kilometers probably seven, seven, seven kilometers, kilometers yeah away. and you know when we are visited by americans they ask the question what is your unique sales point and we can argue about this and that in each wine we have his own philosophy but each wine on our farm of a 180 degree clear view towards the ocean. Incredible. Yeah, that's, I think, in my opinion, the definition of a cool, moderate climate. Exactly, mm. exactly. And also, and you know, we'll talk about it a little, little more in the in the next wine. Obviously, soil has such a big, important mm. role to you play um, in the in the wine. And I think that when we move over to the next one shortly, we can definitely discuss that because I feel like there's quite a bit of minerality oh, in, yes. that, in that yeah. Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. No, and it's it's interesting, you know, soils, you mentioned the word soils, and if I know for a lot of people, they find it a bit abstract, you know, soil, mm -hmm. what does it mean? But in South Africa, there's three main soil types. The one is Table Mountain Sandstone that yeah. derive from this amazing beacon in Cape Town, many different variances of soil. Then in Stellenbosch, around the two big landmarks, by Helderberg and Simonsberg, there's decomposed granite. Yeah. And uh, then there's shale that's divided in two categories, Marmersbury shale, that's the main soil type yes. on our farm. And then also um, Bockefeld shale yes. in the Sierras Robertson region. There's big portions of Bockefeld shale that makes it very interesting. Yeah. Just, just listening to that and thinking of the geographic contrast, we can really make unique styles of wine in South Africa. Yeah, well, I think you've been doing an incredible job, especially with this one. So that was amazing. Really, really good. I hope that you first guys enjoyed 
the first of our canapes as well as the first of our wines, which was that incredible Cap Classique. Should we move on to the next one? Yeah. This is honestly, when I'm not just saying this because I'm saying it's because I'm thinking with you, one of my absolute favorite favorite Sauvignon Blanc. Thank you, guys. Maybe just a few words on, on Sauvignon Blanc. The first sort of records that was discovered was in 1880 on Sauvignon Blanc, and it was planted on a farm called Boschenlevel. That's today Groot Constantia. Mm. And then in 1953, a, a big co-op in Paul had the first time in the so-called harvest book, they, they talk about Sauvignon Blanc. But I think the man that really put Sauvignon Blanc on the map in South Africa is the late Ross Gower yeah. of Plain Constantia. He changed the profile of it and he picked fruit riper in Constantia. And uh, suddenly Sauvignon Blanc had a complete different profile. And in 1986, he produced one of the greatest white wines in this country. Yeah. And he set such a great standard for us as that follow him that, uh, and this is the most consumed varietal wine in South Africa. It's the second most planted. The most planted in South Africa is Shannon, followed by Sauvignon Blanc, Colombage, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Shiraz. And yeah, it's it's amazing. It's about 1.7 million cases of 12 consumed on the local market. And people ask me overseas, people ask me, like, why is Sauvignon Blanc popular? And I think we live in a warmer country. Yeah. And, you know, lo looking at your food and your style of pres presenting it, people love something light, love yeah. to have a picnic outside, have, love to barbecue with fish, or, of course, our our main intake is is uh, meat. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we love to be outside. And 100%. I think that's where Sauvignon Blanc is so, doing so well. This 2023. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. it's a, it's one of a region Cape Town. Maybe I can mention something about yeah, that. Hundred percent. If you have a certified bottle of wine, guys, and it has this seal on, it's certified for three things. One first variety. Uh, you need to have eighty-five percent of the ingredient, the content of this bottle need to be Sauvignon Blanc. So you can blend Semillon in this case. There's eight percent Semillon. Okay. Uh, the vintage is two thousand and twenty-three. So eighty-five percent of the of the content of the bottle need to be of this vintage and on the back label you will read cape the wine of a region cape town yes. so for years uh, the Grenel was part of durbanville and we're still part of durbanville but durbanville philadelphia constantia and cape point vineyards became part of a bigger appellation called uh -huh. cape town and it's actually a quite a clever move because for for guests from abroad um they you know they don't really understand philadelphia no and I mean, I don't even understand. Yeah, the, it's, wards, it's, ward, it's wards now of the yeah. bigger appellation, Cape Town. Yeah. And I think just, just the word Cape Town, we are all Cape Townians. Definitely. Uh, it carries so much more weight than Philadelphia or Durbanville. Yeah. So this is this, guys. If you swirl this and you tilt it like this, 45 degrees towards your nose, and you let the top part of the glass rest on the bridge of your nose, and you sniff, not doing this, but sort of a softer Soft, sniff yeah. and take it away. And many people tell me, Charles, I can't smell. Everybody can smell, my friend. So <laughs> if you do it a second time, um, you will quickly uh, pick up different aromatics in the wine. And that's a sound a sign of a nice complex wine. Yes. So for exactly. me, this reminds me of a fruit bowl. And I saw you have some uh, um, capsicum and interesting flavors here in the serving. Your, you're preparing your next dish. And this is what it's all about. If this was neutral and had no flavors in it, I think I'll be on my way out. <laughs> so we, 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 we're looking at a fruit bowl with grenadellas. Yes. Um, passion fruit, apples. We, yeah. we, we smelled apples just now before this. So this is all the flavors in Sauvignon Blanc. Incredible. It really is. And guys, dry, dry, I mentioned... Uh, I don't want to give you a lecture, but um, if you think of a liter of Coca-Cola, mm. the sugar of that is 110 grams. And if you can imagine the sugar in this wine is 1.9 grams. Yeah. So that's the difference. And uh, rather drink wine than... Rather drink wine than tag. <laughs> exactly. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> this really is incredible. It's got a really nice citrus flavor as mm -hmm. well. So there's definitely some citrus yeah. coming through, some lemons. And, the, and, and the, 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 the sort of the soily flavors. In exactly. There. Yeah. there is that bit of reality reality of it. It really is. And that's... I mean, for me personally, that's the kind of Sauvignon Blanc that I really yeah. like to drink. It's that kind of that minerality. It's that that flavor of of almost like a salinity in the wine. Mm. And I think that you're getting that as well. It's, it's nice and dry. It's fruity. It's incredibly fruity on the nose. Um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And uh, I was saying before to Charles that it was um, 
it was chosen as, as my wedding wine to this. It was incredible. Whoa. This what yeah. I, what I wanted to drink. Still married? I'm still married. I'm still married. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Mm. But yeah, cool. So we're going to also start making our second canopy, which is also quite a fun little something different. You'll find in your boxes. You'll see we've got these beautiful tiny little wraps. Um, these are available at Pick and Pay. Um, and these are super, super versatile. We've used them for so many different things. You can create what we're going to be doing this tonight is obviously making some little tacos. You can use them um, as uh, some little rotis. We've put them in pans and we've given them a crisp up and created little rotis. But we've got some really great flavors here, basically, that I think that will work quite nicely. As you said, we've got some fresh flavors. We've got these, which are lightly marinated red peppers. So literally, we've taken the red peppers. We've taken out the seeds. We've given them a little bit of a, a soft roast um, and we've marinated that in a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of olive oil um, and some herbs. And we've got some chorizo, which is really quite fun as well. Something that I like very much with a Sauvignon Blanc because it is quite fatty. Mm. And I think a Sauvignon Blanc has got that really great um, sort of acidity level. Um, and it's nice to have a balance of acidity and fat. It kind of cuts through each other. They don't, they don't mm. bite each other. They work quite nicely. And then we've got this, which is some whipped goat cheese. Same thing, which we've done also, is we've added a little bit of flavor to this whipped goat cheese. Very, very simple, same thing. You can get a log of your Chevin goat cheese at Pick and Pay. Whip that up. If it is a little bit stiff, you can add a bit of cream, add a little bit of milk, but you whip it up and it becomes nice and soft. Um, and we've just zested a little bit of lemon zest into it. The reason why we've used lemon zest instead of lemon juice um, is that the lemon juice is actually quite acidic mm. um, and the lemon zest just gives it a little bit of a floral kind of flavor or notes rather than actually giving it that sourness. So that's quite a nice thing to know. So if you're wanting to add a little bit of flavor of lemon and you don't want to be adding the sourness to it, a really great thing is just to give a very fine zest of lemon into the dish and it brings out that really nice freshness without giving it that sourness. And then the last two components, one is a really cool little thing we've done, which is very simple. It is a herb oil, super simple. You take some, some herbs, be it coriander, be it a little bit of um, parsley, some soft, soft herbs. And what you do is you blanch them and blanching basically is you just drop it into some boiling water. You can take it out very, very quickly, literally for five seconds, put it into some ice water, cool it off. Um, and you blitz that up with some oil, you strain it, and you get, end up with a really nice green oil. The thing about this also, a little bit of a tip, if you are wanting it to retain its green color, don't let it get into the sunlight. The UV light degrades it and makes it go a little bit of a brown color. So if you want to keep it, put it into your fridge, wrap it up in a little bit of tin foil, or put it into a, a bottle that is doesn't let the, the, the sunlight into it. Last little bit, we've got a radish, one of my favorite things at the moment. Really cool, gives it a nice sort of peppery notes and stuff. Okay, so we've got our board. Take out your board, guys, pop it down, um, put that straight onto the board. There we go. And we're gonna start building this. Super simple, we'll probably start, I think, with the, maybe we'll start off with the, the red pepper onto your board. They're quite long and big, but you can just basically cut them up however you want to. I'm going to cut them up at little angles into some thin, thin slivers. There you go. And that's just going to go straight down the middle. You're building a tucker. A tucker is kind of like quite a, I would say, like a, a Mexican-y, mm. South American kind of dish. You're going to be basically making a, a long line. I'll turn it around so you can see. There we go. A nice little line down the middle. And then what we'll do is we're also going to take our chorizo. Chorizo is a pork sausage, basically. A lot of bit of quite a lot of fat. It's got garlic, it's got thyme, it's got most of all, it's got paprika, mm. nice sort of Spanish smoked paprika. I want you to just cut that down the middle like that until you end up with two little halves. There we go. And what we'll do is we're just going to cut them into half moons. There we are. So that is going to go also into the center of our taco. I'm going to move that over and place it down the center. So we've got that really great sort of fattiness and the flavor. We've got a freshness of the red um, pepper. One more two like that, right down the middle. And you really can fill these tacos with absolutely anything you want. Um, they are a perfect little thing for a canopy party. All right, and now we're going to do a few little nice dollops 
of our goat's cheese. I absolutely love goat's cheese. It's got that kind of little bit of a, a sourness and sometimes it smells like a goat's armpit, but um, I love it. <laughs> the French goat's cheese, it's, it's something it's quite, else as well. Huh? Quite a road kill. It's a road kill, exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take our little piping bag and I, you literally can probably just do a little zigzag over the top. It holds everything together. It gives a nice sort of creaminess to it as well. All right, so we've got three little components in there so far. And what we'll do is we're going to now just get our little radish, pop that onto the board. There we are. And I think maybe we'll just do the same thing that we did with the, with the, um, the, the uh, apple. We're just going to create a few little half moons with that as well, which will pop straight on top. This radish is crunchy, fresh, gives a nice sort of peppery note to it. Slightly, it's not sweet in the slightest. You know, have you ever actually cooked radish? No. It's very good, I must say. You can actually put that into a pan with a little bit of olive oil and you can cook them like little little radish chips. Why? I know, my daughter loves them. Oh. It's, it's, a, it's a vibe. All right, Jeez. cool. And then the last little bit is we're going to do a little drizzle of this herb oil. That gives it a nice freshness. It also adds, I think, to the wine quite nicely. A smaller little bit of that, that oil on top. Here we go. And then the last little bit wow. is you'll find these cute little, very, very tiny, 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 if you were to pop it down there, tiny, tiny little, little um, pigs. And this will pig your canapé together. So what we'll do is we'll just fold it up very much so like that. Yeah. There we go. Pinch it together. Put your little pig in there. Well, that's and there you good. have this cute little taco. And imagine four or five or six of those or ten of those just lined up ready for your guests to arrive. Can, even... can, you, can you swallow the, the pigs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit crunchy. A little bit crunchy. So there we go, guys. That's the second canapé of the evening. Little taco with some marinated oh. red pepper, some whipped goat's cheese, a um, little bit of radish, green oil, and some chorizo. Wow, it looks amazing. Jono, you're a real expert. Eh? It's so simple. It really is. And it really isn't just about using simple ingredients and building those, those flavors. And as we said to you guys at home many times before, experiment, try new things, try wines that you've never tried before. Mm -hmm. Literally. And be adventurous. Be adventurous. Try okay. it out. And with this, I think it will work. I'm going to pass this over to you. You are the taste tester. <laughs> yeah. I am the, the, the yeah. wine tester tonight. Yeah. You are the taste tester. Johnny, can I ask you a question? What what size will this be in pick and pay? Will it be? It's not in this. It won't be no, in that form. Not at all. So this is the whip camembert, the camembert. So it is a Fairview product, which is available in pick and pay. It comes in a jar. Um, it's basically a camembert cream. So you buy it in a jar, and it's that center almost of the camembert. That's soft. Wow creamy center which mm. is amazing we've got a really great little um comment over here and just talking about experimenting somebody i don't know who it is but very very good on you i've added green apple to my taco and it added another dimension to the flavor profile fantastic really really good mm. guys try it out mm. really really good idea this is amazing really it's a fascinating combination of the chorizo and the, like you say the capsicum with the creamy and the and the oil afterwards, you know the 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 green oil. It's it's amazing, amazing combination with the Sauvignon Blanc. Really, yeah, yeah. good. I'm glad. I'm really I'm glad. And we have a lot of fun trying to pair these wines with with various different I'm, I'm sorry, ingredients. I'm going to have the rest of it. You do. You go right in. Give me another one. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can stack it into your into your pocket and and take some of this stuff home with you as well. But yeah, it's really really good to kind of try things out. It really is and. Um, you know, sometimes when you think things might not work, it really doesn't matter. I think mm. that wine and food pairing is all about how you're feeling on the day. You know, a lot of the times we end up pairing, say, for instance, a, I don't know, a rosé with some, like salmon. And generally, would it, would it really go? But the visual appeal of a pink piece of salmon mm. and, and uh, a rosé, mm. it sometimes works. It really does. Mm. There's nothing that really clashes there. But it's certainly, it, it works. So, so try things out. This for me is incredible. It really is. It's, I, I love a light, really, really vibrant, minerally 
fruity on the nose. Mm -hmm. It's it's got everything. It really really does. And and John, if I can add to it, you know that's the amazing thing about call it experienced winemakers. They will take in. You will send five bins of fruit to five different wineries from the same vineyard yes. um, made by let's call it experience not necessarily the emphasis is not so much on experienced winemakers but due to their philosophy and their approach and the equipment it will be five different wines yeah. and that's the amazing thing you exactly. know and, uh, if i can give you a carte blanche here uh you know you probably will put up and, and that's the fun about it the adventure about it and you know to trust your taste at the end of the day but yeah. this was an amazing combination i must say good well i'm glad you enjoyed it and i think that you know interesting enough you were saying that um tomorrow is the um is the guild auction yeah the and, uh, you, guild. And you've been part of the guild for for, for many many years yeah, for 24 years now and uh, it's uh, you know years ago there was two auctions the Nederberg auction that's not carrying on but the guild auction and the, it's so amazing the auction is standing on three legs one is high tech technical tasting for the members yeah the one is looking after uh, if i may use this political word previously disadvantaged young winemakers from yeah. the rural countryside and i put 15 through my hands and it's so amazing to see how the youngsters after their studies yeah and they from steinkoff and from zuar and from pinion and to see these young kids arriving as a rookie and leaving as a confident young winemaker i'm so proud you know i want to be emotional <laughs> <laughs> and amazing. where we are today is so wow. amazing it's not just making a contribution to a young kid's life but to know how they perform afterwards and you know some of them is today senior winemakers at big wineries it's, yeah. it's really amazing and the third leg is the auction that you refer to yeah. um, so tomorrow each member uh, can submit uh, uh, the equivalent of a barrel it get tasted by members on in a blind tasting it need to be bottled there's a lot of scrutiny there's a lot of questions asked yes. around the quality of the wine because it do represent south africa and the guild so the yeah. wine need to be of top, top quality and so that isn't generally it's it's not a wine that you would no. you would offer as part of your no, your stable it's it's a no, new restaurants purchase it private people okay. buy it uh big chains buy it uh, but we as members is not allowed if uh, to sell it again you okay. know it's it, it belonged technically tongue in the cheek to the guild sure because sure, it have sure. a guild label with your name on it and the wine so it's you perfect. have to go onto the auction and to buy it, to buy it. To buy it yeah so any the person can go to the evening to wines to Lord Charles and Saturday basically the whole morning and the whole day will be the auction and uh, if you have a need to buy something special put away for your grandkids or something you can register and put up your and your, how many uh, what is the sort of quantity that you need to buy no no there's there's different lots uh, I think the smallest lot will be four cases of six okay. and the biggest lot I guess can be maybe 10 cases of six and of course restaurants and bigger companies will purchase the bigger lots the price yes. will be slightly lower but as soon as they move to the smaller lots of course your private people put up their their their, their, their hands to yeah. buy and it's it's really amazing and what's so amazing a portion of that income will go back to the what we call the protege program yes the biggest chunk will come to us as the winery because we are as person is a member not the Grendel I'm Charles right. Hopkins he's a member of that Okay. But of course, the friend will supply the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. All right, good stuff, guys. I hope that you enjoyed that. I know that Robert really, really did. He said that this is the best um, canapé and wine pairing to date. So good job. Well done. No. This is great wine, great food. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it as well. All right, perfect. That is, I'm going to take my last sip of this. As I said, it's a, it is my favorite. So I'm going to enjoy this for, for as long as I can. It brings back great memories of your wedding, eh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That and the rosé. The rosé was another one, which was our, which was the wine. So I'm glad that you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, and so also I wanted to ask a question just also about the um, the vineyards. Um, do you source grapes from different areas? We we crush um, 800 tons, of which 70% is from our farm. Oh, wow. And then we uh, purchase uh, some of our farms or vineyards is in Cirrus that yeah. is quite a unique location quite a different climatic conditions at the Grenoble that's very much ocean influence there it's high-lying vineyards growing above 950 meters remember earlier I told you of 295 meters yes. at the Grenoble this is uh, not high if you think in Cirrus the highest vineyard uh, journal maybe for 
the people listening, uh, the um, highest vineyard in, in the Western Cape that's produced top quality wine is Sutherland, a wine oh, called yes. Mount Sutherland, yeah. but produced by the Devals. So that's 1,500 meters above sea level. Wow. Stederberg is 1,125 meters and behind our back is Table Mountain. And funny enough, exactly the same height. And then we own vineyards in Cirrus um, that is on a 950 to 1,300 meters above sea level. Okay. And it's so amazing to work with this fruit. You know, it's late, it ripened different. Yes. There's, uh, the acidity is much higher. It's really, for me, in the last 10 years, it's been one of the most fascinating fruit I've been working with. That's great. Yeah. It really is. And so you, we were talking, obviously, about Table Mountain being also at 1,000 meters right behind us. Um, I believe you also have a tasting room on Table Mountain yeah, as well. It's, it's amazing. We, um, the Graf family that I work for, they have quite a strong interest in the in Table Mount, I think in the cable car. And you know, it's such an icon beacon in South Africa when the weather allows you. It's a must see in South Africa. Yes. And I've been there, I'm embarrassed to say many moons ago, I think I was a young boy of maybe 16 and and we went there two years ago and I was just, wow, it's so amazing eh? to stand on top there. You have a clear view towards our vineyards. Um, so then you could see the vineyards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, on the really western side of the Teichelberg, so we have a clear view to that. And uh, yeah, we we due to the family influence, we have a tasting room. You can purchase a bottle of wine. Unfortunately, friends, you can't bring it down. But you, you, you need to consume it there. You can even, even be happier there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you you don't have to walk down. You can catch the no, no, down. No, no, please, please don't walk down after a <laughs> bottle of wine. Maybe we will read about you in the newspaper. <laughs> uh, oh, that's really, really good. So yeah. do go and do visit that. As, as what a great way to spend a, a day in Cape Town. Um, go up the cable car, spend a day up, uh, do some wine tasting mm. at the highest, on the, one of the highest little points up in, in Cape Town. Right yeah, there. definitely, definitely. And like I say, a thousand, um, I think 25 meters above sea level. And it, it's such an amazing view to all sides. Eh? And there's yeah. certain things you can do up there. There's a history trail, there's Feinbos trail, there's the wine tasting, of course. There's something to grab to eat. And you can just there's even abseiling from there. I'm not an expert on that. I, I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> I don't think I want to eat that. <laughs> All right, good yeah. stuff. Cool. So we're on to our second third wine, actually. Yeah. Third wine. As we said, it's been a really, really nice journey working through everything from the bubbles, the cap classique, all the way through to um something nice and mineral and something nice and fresh, and ending off with probably one of I think South Africa's favorite um mm-hmm. cultivars, the Merlot. Yeah, it's the eighth most planted, uh, Jono, and what's so fascinating, it's following Sauvignon Blanc. This is the second most consumed varietal wine. It's wow. not a Grenoble, I'm talking yeah, of the, the Cabernet, Merlot. the Merlot, yeah. and it's, why is it famous? I think the South Africans love to have a bit of a French slang to Merlot, something <laughs> like that, but it's a Merlot, <laughs> something like that, but it's always soft, it's always, yes, I think that's, uh, that's if all. I may say, feminine, and it's so amazing, so this wine spent 12 months in barrel, the fruit is growing on our farm, this is also a Cape Town wine, and for me, if I, if I close my eyes, it reminds me of a Christmas cake, you know, with Dates and funny enough, uh, yeah. I don't know if you had a say in this, but dates and raisins and 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 it's so special. Yeah. And it's 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 really a great drink. It's a yeah. great drink, you know. And uh, you can you can enjoy it any any time. And it's, I think for many people that start off with red wine, mm-hmm. this is maybe one of the mm-hmm. safe bets to start with. Yes, now it's not, exactly. and many people stay with it because yeah. it's sort of. Uh, Printed in the on the palette, if I may use that term, Same. but it's uh, it's it's really nice. And just a, a, another tip on wine uh, uh, etiquette: uh, people sit in a restaurant and they swirl the glass like this, looking at the color. It's impossible to look at the color and make a judgment on the color with a brown or black or creamy background. So that's why a French restaurant have a white tablecloth. So people swirl it and tilt it like this, forty-five degrees. Uh, towards maybe I can show it to you to, and they will look at the color in the rim of the wine oh, not I in the see. tummy of the wine in the rim of the wine that makes it very interesting and again guys take a sip of a sniff of it close your eyes move out blow out and bring it back again and please don't do this because it will be an alcohol sensation but smell the fruit in here mm. it reminds me of a flavor that was so 
that I was brought up with. And I, I'm always convinced, Jono, that um, flavors is in your subconscious mind. And if you smell something, it comes back where you uh, pick up loose and bales with your uncle or you were cooking a leg of lamb with your grandmother or something. And this reminds me of mulberry, mulberry yeah. jam. And with that Christmas cake, it's very special. <laughs> it is beautiful. And, and that's beautiful. something on wood. It's, a, it's amazing. A French barrel, 225. That's the most used barrel. 36 years ago, when I started off, it cost 480 rand. That barrel now costs 20,000 rand. So we have seminars, we have workshops, we have discussion, we have fights about what is the alternative to oak. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we must say to ourselves, the right thing is to put the right wine for the right time in the right barrel. And, and yeah. guys, remember, friends, uh, to put a wine in a barrel is not to add wood flavors to it, but to mellow it, to Soften make it, it softer. Yeah, yeah, that's the main purpose. So, I mean, there's also different techniques of doing that. I know that obviously the wine barrels, you said 20,000 around a wine barrel. There are obviously a lot of people which you can maybe put some wood chips into it, yeah, yeah. staves through the, through can the I, Can I make a, can I say something to, to use that? It's like yeah. ki kissing your sister. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not the real it's thing. It's not the real thing. It's not the real thing. You, you never get to... that end result. I'm no, no, you. no, exactly. Yeah. Different methods. Certainly yeah. wouldn't want to do that. All right. Okay. So I think let's, let's try it. Let's taste it. Yeah. As you said, you're getting mulberries. Yeah. Some uh, black fruit. Black, black fruit. fruit yeah. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, as you said, Christmas. Christmas cake. Amazing. Yeah. All right, good stuff. So we're going to move on to our final canopy of the evening. Something quite fun, something slightly different. You'll see we've got some dates. A lot of people haven't really experimented too, with, too much with dates before, and they're kind of like, what do we do with it? Do you just have it as, as it is? We've decided to kind of give the dates a little bit of a, a zhuzh up, make it a little bit some something different. And so we've got... Because these dates, they have been pitted, so there are no pits in it. What we're going to do is we're going to stuff it. We're going to add a little bit of something quite fun, um, something quite um, obviously appropriate for the um, for the the wine as well. And we're going to start building on this as well. So very, very similar to what we did before. Take out your board, pop it down. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice open the date just on the side and open it up like that. There we go. Just open it up ever so slightly. Here we are. On one side, here we are. We're going to do two of these little guys. All right. And then keep it open like that. And you've got three little piping bags. One of the, there we are. There we go. This over here is a, um, <laughs> is actually a um, uh, peanut butter. Whoa. Peanut butter. Very, very oh, simple. Geez. Obviously, we, we, we haven't gone with any sweetened peanut butter because the dates are quite nice and sweet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pipe this in as well, squeeze it out, very, very simple. It adds a quite a kind of a fullness and, and a lusciousness to the, the canapé. I'm just going to pipe that into the middle and almost stuff it with that little peanut butter. A really, really cute little thing to do for canapés at the end of the night instead of doing your general, uh, here's a box of chocolates. Mm. Do these beforehand, they'll last forever. Stuff those with a little bit of the um the peanut butter and then we have a few different little elements we've got this which is almost like a little chocolate sauce chocolate ganache as you said before we've done this quite a few times this chocolate ganache is literally chocolate a little bit of cream into a pan um and you you melt it over it it's got a little bit of um cocoa in, in it and what we're going to do is we're just going to drizzle both of these two little packets over it so this is the chocolate sauce literally just a little bit of a drizzle on top zigzag your way across left to right there we go so Regina, will that be like a dessert yeah definitely a little dessert as and, you said, instead it's, of it's amazing sorry to interrupt you I'm, I'm doing tastings all over when we send wines in advance and many times a well-trained chef like yourself will taste mallow yeah. and decide to serve it with the dessert i know and exactly you're doing that <laughs> <laughs> serving mela is also quite a I would say it's quite an easy, not easy, but it's quite a versatile wine to pair with, 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 with both savory and um, mm. and other ones as well. Mm. We had a question here as well. Can we make sure that, uh, well, can we get some of the, the old pairing notes from previous ones? Absolutely. Just in the comment box, drop your email below and we'll be able to send that through to you. 
not a problem at all. All right, and then now we've got our last little um, piping bag, lots of little piping bags into there. This is like a little bit of a sour cherry, sour plum um, compote. So we've taken some plums, those have been reduced down in a pan. We've blitzed them up just with a little bit of um, a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of water. And that simple is the same thing. It's just also a nice little drizzle that gives it a little, it, it gives it a bit of a tartness to the to the um, canapé, which is quite sweet because of the date. So that just gives it a little bit of an offset there. The last two little bits is we've got nice little walnuts, simple crushed walnuts. I love adding a little bit of a nutty note to all of our, our canapes, and it gives a nice little bit of a crunch. That can be drizzled over the top. There we are. Wow. There we are. Looks amazing. And then the final thing, which I believe is always quite important in a sweet, sweet canapé to bring out the overall flavor of it, is to add a little bit of mold and salt. So that mold and salt is basically a coarse little salt. It's better to add these, what we these mold and salts. It's a it's a it's a brand name. But it is basically it's salt flakes. You don't if you add normal salt, fine salt, it'll completely cover that in salt, and you'll get an extremely salty flavor. This just adds a little bit of a pop of that saltiness. So wow. here we are. Do take photos. Use those hashtags. You could stand still chance of chance of winning one of uh, three of three hundred rands worth of smart shopper points. So Jeez. that's for you. A little bit of taste. Yeah, Let's great. do exactly the same. Cheers. Nice big swirl. Let it coat your mouth. <laughs> Pop that in. Whoa. And I'm pretty sure there'll be a little bit of an, mm, an explosion mm. of different flavors. You can't even believe what the salt do to it. Eh? Yeah, it's crazy. Eh? Mm. It really is. It kind of it changes it quite nicely. If you have everything that's the same profile, it becomes quite flat and quite mm. bland. Mm. But if you add different flavor profiles, it adds a little bit of a, a different dimension to the to the Yo, Jordan, This is amazing. Man. Absolutely amazing. Man. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Really, really good. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well. Um, please do post onto social media. We'd love to see your pictures. I'm loving to see what you guys are doing in your in your household as well. It really is quite interesting to see all these little master chefs running away. You can see more drinking than cooking at the moment. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad place to be. Yeah. All right. So I'm sure that you guys have also seen what's inside your packs. You've got a few little vouchers. Obviously, being a wine club member, really, really important. You guys do get 25% off a selection of wines every single month. Free delivery to your house as well. Exclusive entry to some of these amazing events that we're doing as well. And not only that, but you've also got an incredible voucher over here, which is a hundred rand worth of hundred rand off your next purchase on your online. You just enter your smart shopper number and use the code decren 100 and you'll get a hundred rand worth off your smart shopper as well. So there you'll see you've got some really great specials. Pick and Pay also runs some incredible events. We are in Johannesburg on the 4th and the 5th of November for the Pick and Pay Food and Wine Festival. It's being held at the Wanderers Club and in Elovo. Please do come down and see us there. We've got 50 different wine farms that are showcasing their wines. We've got incredible food, some incredible entertainment as well. It'd be nice to see you there. And yeah, I think that we've covered a lot this evening. As I said, I think that we should probably extend the next one to an hour and a half and have you have you back for another well, even longer even, <laughs> even longer even longer no, exactly but it's been really really good yeah. it's been really good yeah. thank yeah. you thank you it's a privilege and thank you to pick and pay it's it was really amazing to share our brand and our wines and a bit of info with uh yeah. pick and pay customers it's really special thanks a lot i think so i think that you are going to be the um the the bearer of all the great news <laughs> and sometimes bad news to the other people who didn't win but we do have three incredible winners thank you very very much for posting all your pictures to um social media we've got three winners and the winners would you like to read them out claire backman congratulations claire lee woods Le bongan kotsedi i hope i pronounced it correctly That's exactly it. yeah guys congratulations it's amazing and um yeah uh, wonderful to share with you a bit of info on our wines. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And thank you very much to the Krendel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much to the Pick and Pay Wine Club for putting on these incredible um, events. We do hold them every single month. So please make sure that you do subscribe to the Pick and Pay Wine Club for those incredible deals. But also make sure that you check your SMSs and your WhatsApps 
and your emails to see when the next one is. We've got the next one coming up on the 9th of November. Um, and I think that one is with Fry's Cove. So please do join us for the next one. Thank you very much to Pick and Pay Online, who have also very kindly delivered those beautiful boxes of wine, as well as also your hampers, those in those nice um, Pick and Pay picnic bags that are reusable. So please do use them again. And thank you. We've got a question. Yes. When are we going to get to Crendel back for another pairing? Amazing. So Ooh. thank you, guys. We've got some incredible feedback today. Mm -hmm. It's been a really, really good one. And we'll thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Mm -hmm. I can see that it is a Thursday. Don't worry about Friday. Uh, put that on the back burner. Enjoy your wine. Relax. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back again next time. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks thank you so much, Charles. Thanks a lot.